Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us this far. But in case you are just joining us, Karibu Tanasana. This is Good Morning Kenya. I am Jane Boy. We'd absolutely love to know where you're watching us from this morning. So feel free to check in via our various communication platforms. On Twitter, we are using the hashtag Good Morning Kenya. Our official station handle ever remains to be at KBC Channel 1 across all the social media platforms. My handle is at Jane Wumboy. So right now, we move on to the next segment. And this one is all about learning and looking at the future of learning, where we are, what the pandemic has taught us, and where we need to be, you know, redirecting our focus when it comes to learning, and more so appreciating the online platform for that matter. With us in the studio today, we have two gentlemen that are going to be helping us with this conversation. To my immediate right, we have Brian Masinde, who is a graduate and a beneficiary of Allison, which is a learning platform. Good Good morning, Brian, and welcome. Good morning to you. Thank you for being with us today. And to my extreme right, we have Mike Fierig, who is the CEO of Allison.com. Good morning, Mike, and welcome to the program. Morning, Jen. Great to be here. Thank you for making time to be with us. So if you have any questions or you're just seeking clarifications in regards to this conversation, use that hashtag and we'll be getting to them in just a bit. Now. Let me start with you, Mike. You know, sure. given you are the CEO and founder of Allison.com, in a condensed version, what is Allison.com all about? So uh, Allison.com is an empowerment platform mm -hmm. and it started 15 years ago with free learning. And uh, the opportunity uh, came about through technology, through the internet, through communication technologies to provide quality learning online for free yes. and to do it in a scalable and sustainable way through uh, a business model of advertising and mm -hmm. optional, uh, optional costs. So it, it has grown from being very small to over 24 million people around the world. And the reason I'm in Africa is just even from, from January of this year yeah. till now, about 35 to 40% of the, the entire traffic worldwide on Allison is in Africa. And that's tremendous because there's such growth here and it is the continent of tomorrow. And uh, that's why we're here. Was that the projection that you had when you were setting up this particular platform to just um, ensure that you're offering this platform for learning? What was the mission or what was the projection that you had when you were setting it up? Well, I, I, I guess when you're social, I'd be fairly socially focused and just saying if you're going to spend your work, at, uh, your lifetime at, at one job, mm. what, what could be the single most impactful job uh, that you could do? And uh, as Nelson Mandela says, you know, education is the single greatest weapon we have to change the world. Yeah. It is so true. And that's what I set about doing. And I realized that the technologies were available to make education free to everybody, but nobody was doing it. See, the, the education industry is one of the biggest in the world. Mm. It's over $4 trillion. But a lot of people are making a lot of money out of the way it is right now. But the truth is only 8% of the world have ever gone to college. So what about the other 92%? Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't have the resources. There's a cliche about Nigeria today where there's huge interest and huge uh, need. But Nigeria supposedly needs to create 20 new colleges every year for the next 20 years just to Sustained. satisfy current demand. Yeah. So what you're seeing is that the old system for college and university that's been used in the Western world is utterly inappropriate and inefficient for educating the entire world. And that's not just Africa. Mm. So that's what I said about in looking at Alice and it was, can we create an economic model that where people make money by putting quality content on a platform so that others can learn for free? And that's what we set out to do and that's what we're achieving because even though we're 15 years old, we're actually only beginning in, 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 in what we're trying to do. We, you know, I, I would be happy at some day when there's a billion people on the platform. That's the future we're looking at. Now, let me come to you, Brian. You know, what was your first interaction with Alice and how did you even discover it? So my first interaction was when I finished university. Mm -hmm. I looked for a job. I never got a job. And you know, in the corporate world in Kenya, for you to get a job, you have to really work hard. Yeah. So, Tamaking. <laughs> yeah, you have to tamak. So, so um, I studied international relations to work with NGOs, but then I realized I needed something more for me to be able to be competitive in the market. Mm. So, and I didn't have money to go back to school because most people are going for masters back in school. Yeah. So I just went online and was like, hey, a free course to do maybe uh, finance and accounting. Then I got one. 
and it happened to be in Allison. And I'm really lucky it's Allison. It's not, you know, in, in, in a lot of in a lot of online things you get a lot of fishy like fishy things which are not nice, mm. which are not straight which are not straightforward. Yeah. So I got Allison and, and I finished uh, my introduction to financial and accounting and it helped me a lot in getting a job because I, I got to be able to answer questions in interviews. And you see in Alison, what they teach you is just the same thing you learn in school. Mm -hmm. And you see the world is changing. We, we saw during COVID people were at home a lot. And people are on their phones a lot. People are on their computers a lot. So once you, once you realize that, you realize that you can do more with your phone and you can learn more. You can, it, it's free and it's so easy. Like, it's the same thing you learn in school. Like what I answered in my interview questions yeah. and what I learned in Allison. And what I learned in Allison, like what they have in, in, in university and what they have in Allison, if you compare them, they're all the same. Like the people who write the content, the, 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 the school staff there, they know their job. They're and you see, that's country. the reservation yeah. that so many people have about um, learning online. Like, True. is the quality going to be the yeah. same as in-person learning? What was your personal experience in terms mm -hmm. of, given that you had already gone to university prior yeah. to yeah. this, and you're now switching to a complete online platform yeah. for knowledge purposes, yeah. how were the two compared? So, in terms of quality? Yeah, when, when I was starting, I thought that I want to do this just to get some papers yeah. to add to my CV so that I can be able to get a better job. But when you do the course, you actually realize you're in school. <laughs> because you thought that you're just going to go through it, you're going to get that. Yeah. But it's actually a real course where you get exams, you get assessments. And in my bag, it's just that I haven't brought it here. After that, you graduate and you get a real certificate, a real diploma. like. It's completely what you get in school. The lessons are taught by SMEs, subject matter experts. Like let's say today, like let's say you, if you wanted to learn filmmaking, since you're in, 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 in this world of cameras and everything, you can go there and you'll learn about how to write storyboards, write monologues, write cool stuff. And they're from professionals out of Africa and in Africa, so you learn. You learn, and it's never late to stop learning. So, so quality wasn't compromised at wasn't any point. Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. all right. I think, Jen, if, yeah. I, if I can add, just one of the things as Brian is saying that was very important is differentiation. Mm -hmm. So he was coming out of college with uh, a degree, but yeah. lots of other people had the degree. So, but when you go into a, a job interview, the interviewer and the employer wants to know, well, what's different about you? Why should I hire you instead of the next guy? Mm. So it's very, very important to be able to show that you're different, that you have that edge that you have that extra piece of skill. And that's what Alison is terrific at, because it doesn't cost you, and you have over 4,000 free courses to, to choose from. So it, it just gives you the edge. And that's what we find again and again from interviewing Alison graduates. It just gives you the edge in the, in the workplace, both makes you more competitive, mm -hmm. gets you that promotion, it just puts, puts you ahead. And, and it all goes back to personal motiva motivation yeah. in terms of just trying to better yourself, make yourself more employable, make yourself more productive. Mm. And you can do it, and it doesn't cost you anything. And that's the wonderful thing about it. Now, that brings me to the fact that you have been operating for 15 years, mm. and the platform is still free for anyone who wants to, you know, get on there, um, yeah. get some, learn some of these transferable skills. Yeah. How, has, how have you managed to make it sustainable over the years, given... All the courses, over 4,000, as you've mentioned, sure. are free. Yes. Well, everybody asks us that. But uh, let, let me tell you how. The, the thing is, it's all about volume. Mm -hmm. It's all about how many people. So we don't have a big marketing budget. In fact, most people, like Brian, find out about, about on the web are from word of mouth. People saying, hey, this is where you go get a course and, and that. So... Um, the, the, the business model is based on advertising, and it should be no surprise to people. Uh, mm. Facebook is based on advertising, Google is based on advertising. Why can't the lar one of the largest platforms globally be uh, in education be f uh, based on advertising? The beauty of advertising is that the person watching doesn't actually pay directly. Mm. Now, everybody pays indirectly because you're watching something and people are trying to sell you stuff. But we accept that as part of life. We accept it so that we get TV, that we get radio, and other. So why not apply it to education? So that's what we've done. So over half of our revenues come from advertising. But the one thing that's really uh, unusual about Alison is that because we're very global, yeah. if somebody actually clicks an ad in the United States, which are, is actually our single biggest market worldwide, uh, 
that, uh, that means a lot. You can make $5, $6 in a click, right? Mm. Whereas mm. if somebody clicks in, say, some place like Zimbabwe, you know, we might make one cent or two cent. So the person in the United States clicking pays for 100 people in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Now, what that means is that we have to be competitive in our learning in a market as competitive as the United States uh, to be able to get that revenue in the United States. And what happens is that Africa and other parts of the world are not getting seconds, they're getting exactly what the guy in California is getting. Same so quality, same, same standards. Same quality, same yeah. So that's the beauty of advertising. And the other part of it is that uh, when you complete a course, as Brian was saying, you have to pass an assessment. You are, if, you pa if you get 80% in your final assessment, you are a Nelson graduate. You don't have to pay anything extra. You, ha you can get a certificate, which is a nice to have, not a need to have. And many people buy that because they like to have it and like to be able to show it to mm -hmm. an employer or just put it the up on a wall. The physical nature of yeah. it. <laughs> but you don't have to buy it. And yeah. that's the thing because particularly in Africa, and we're very conscious of this, is that some people just don't have the money to, do, to buy that either. But the way that we're set up is that no matter what you have, if you can get on a phone, you are on Alison and you can use all of our services. And, uh, and, th and that's the beauty of it. But going back to your business model, it really is about volume. It's about making a few cents from a lot of people. Uh, every month we would have many millions of people all over the world on, on the platform. Mm. And once a few people click a few ads, particularly in America, <laughs> we're doing fine. But you would be surprised with Africa as well is one of the things that shows us uh, watching the numbers on our platform, and it's a large digital platform, mm. is, is the progress of Africa as a continent and the growing strength of Africa as an economic uh, place because the advertising yield, how much you make per advertising in every country in Africa is going up. Yeah. What, what does that, re that is a really nice signature to say, you know what, things are happening in Africa and whether you see it every day when you go outside your door, I'm telling you from what we see in the statistics is that ec Africa is becoming economically more strong every, every day. So uh, that's, uh, that's why we're excited about Africa, besides the fact that we know that there's a huge need uh, right across Africa here. All right. Yeah. So 15 years has clearly given you that trajectory that, you know, looking at where you were when you started to where we are currently with the platform and the numbers that you are seeing. Yeah. And also looking at the fact that, yes, you are out to offer um, a free platform for people to gain knowledge, but you're also in business. You also have competition. I mean, there are other platforms yes. that are still employing the same model to mm. offer free... Um, a platform for free education and yeah. particularly so looking at YouTube, which is one of the most common and yeah. especially among the youth. Yeah, well, the, the one thing about you, YouTube and, uh, and Alison is yes, it, we can be compared to YouTube, but the fact is if you go onto a video on YouTube, you don't really know how long it is, you don't know what level it's at, yeah. you don't know who the author is, so there's so much that you don't know about a video as to whether you're going to stay on it or not. Whereas on Alison, Every vi uh, there's no piece of learning that goes on Alison which is not reviewed, mm -hmm. which is not the case on YouTube. And, and you have subject matter experts that will make sure that it's 101, 102, 103, and you know where you're going. For instance, if you're learning English and you want to get a certificate in, in English, you will, you will do a, first do a test on Alison. You will say, okay, well, st first thing you need to, to know is where's your, your English level, at? Is it beginner? Uh, yeah. Is it intermediate? Is it proficiency? Advanced? And then we'll tell you, this is where you start. We have 68 courses in English. We'll tell you which one to start at. Maybe you're, maybe you're at one or two or three. But uh, most people, certainly in Africa, or well, a lot of people in Africa have ba basic English. But do you, do you want to be able to be able to certify that for an employer, mm. particularly if that employer is hiring you from abroad? W what, what we see today is, you know, a a Alison has 200 employees around the world. 50 of them are in Africa, every one of them working remotely. So when we, based in Ireland, are looking to hire somebody else in Africa, we want to know the broad spectrum of, 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 of education and skill set that they have. We want to make sure that they can use a spreadsheet online. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that they speak English to a level that's... Really, so we give them our own tests. <laughs> you know, we, we have our own dog food, as, as they say. We eat our own dog food. You just... Uh, so this is a way of being able to assess people remotely because an enormous num a lot of the opportunity for workers in Africa going forward is not working for the, for the company that's down the street. It's working for the company that's thousands of miles away, mm -hmm. but that you have the skills that they need. All right. Now, let me come to you, uh, Brian. Looking at, you know, how um, practical this platform was when you were uh, taking the course that you did, how easily um, could you maneuver your way around it to use the different tools that are available there? Compared to, you know, when you go to a class, you have your book, your pen, you're waiting for the lecturer. It's, it's, it's just... Um, how can I say it? It's all, it's all the same. It's all about what do you want? Like, what do you want in life? 
what what what's your next step what's your next move when you don't have a job what are you going to do mm. so like so you have to just keep on looking for something mm -hmm. and like he said like you're on your phone if you have a phone you have Alison you the platform a, is user friendly yeah it's, it, as for even as someone who maybe it's the like first time I'm getting a smartphone yeah. and I've heard about Alison yeah. I want to do a short course that will help me get papers to be able to get this entry-level job yeah as long as you have Instagram you have uh, Alison. It's the same way, as in the same way you go like in photos, mm. it's the same way you can take a pen, a paper, take your phone, get on Alison, you scroll, you study something. Mm -hmm. And at times you don't even want to do it f to get certification. Yeah. You just want to learn something, you want to study. You see, this, the time, have you ever been on your phone at times and you want to look at something and you don't want to be on social media, you want to learn something, maybe you have to learn about the war, World War II, or you want to learn about fashion or anything. But you go online, maybe on Wikipedia, and you search, and then it brings you a lot of things. There's an Alison, it's not like that. When you search, you get one thing, then you start studying mm -hmm. and studying. And like, and like in Kenya, like, the people, people have jobs, maybe they didn't even study for. Like you can find someone who's working in PR, and they studied human resource. So once you get to PR and you realize people in your workplace are more advanced than you, what do you do? You're like, I want to get like them. So not that you lose your job, but for you to, to be just like them, to gain the confidence in you, you go on Alison or you get, just go online and say, I want to learn PR now that I'm a human resource guy. And two months, three months after you've graduated, you'll come and tell these guys something you've learned and they'll be like, oh, she's catching up fast she's um, one of us now mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, and also just bringing the same aspect to you, Mike, you know, because looking at the reception when you get to this platform, it could be a make or break for so many people because I don't want to also get onto a platform that is going to be another process getting to learn how to use this platform mm. before I get to the step where I get to gain the knowledge from this platform. In terms of making it user friendly, considering that mm. you have a global population to um, attend <coughs> to, how has that been factored in or addressed? Well, I, I guess, uh, you know, we, we have uh, growing UX and UI uh, teams, you know, in terms of user interface. We do a lot of research. Yeah. We don't just do research for uh, in just one country. We do it in research around the world. So when we're launching any new particular uh, feature on the platform, mm -hmm. we, will a we will have a, a focus group uh, somewhere in Africa. We will look in India. We will look in the States. We will get feedback from different places. Yeah. So I, I would say growing resource within the company because we're growing and mm -hmm. we have more people with more expertise. That's definitely driving the, qua the, the ease of using the platform and then just doing better research. But it, it's important to note as well that we've moved beyond just being free learning. So, for instance, say in Brian's instance, if he, if he didn't know what job he should be doing, you can do a free a workplace for personality test. So you just go on, you do your test, and it'll tell you, you know, we often say to people who want to learn and get, become employed, well, hold on a minute, who are you? What aptitudes do you have? Do you mm. know who you are? Yeah. How about a bit? How about, uh, how about a bit of self-examination? Go through a test. It'll only take 18, to 18, 19, 20, 20 minutes or so. It'll ask you fundamental questions about how do you like, how do you deal with people? How do you deal with pressure? How do you deal with this and that? And then at the end of the score, it says, you know what? You should be looking at doing this career, or you should be looking at this job. And then you will go on to Alison, and we list. Every, uh, we're heading to having every career possible worldwide listed. But we have about 700 of the main careers, which would cover 95% like of the workforce worldwide. And we'll point you to those careers and say, okay, your test says that you might be, be you might be best to consider these type of careers mm -hmm. and these type of jobs. And if you wanted to consider it, these are the courses that you do. So if you're, uh, if you're unemployed or you're just, if you're in a job and you're thinking, you know what, uh, I might like a career change, go test yourself. And yeah. you can do it for free. It goes back to what Brian was saying. You know, we are having so many people in careers that they didn't study for because yes. of career mismatch, you know, wrong advice from campus, from peers and all that. So yeah. I think that's a very added advantage when it comes to people and especially when you are out of campus or just before joining campus. You need to understand yourself, your personality, your who you are before you decide I want to go into media, into international relations and the likes. Now, that made me even forget what I wanted to ask you. But let me come back to you. Um, looking at 
now narrowing down to Africa, given Africa is one of the populations that are heavily on the um, Allison platform, mm. what are some of the courses that you have noted are mostly taken uh, by learners within the African space? Yeah. Uh, for, for sure, some of the business courses. So, for instance, project management. Project management is applicable to nearly any business. Mm. And if you're in working for a company and you want a promotion, what an employer wants you to do is to take on more responsibilities. That's how you get paid more, yeah. is basically. So, but can you handle that responsibility? Can you handle more things in your workplace? If you go along and you do a project management course in Alison, and we have many of them at different levels, and then you present that on your CV or resume, people say, okay, this person has thought fundamentally about this. The other thing is about, you know, sometimes people are in a company and they want a promotion. Do they understand basic finance, just like Brian did a finance course? Do they understand basic customer service? Uh, if you're in a foreign country, perhaps, uh, or say, for instance, you're in a part of Africa where French is the, is the leading speak, uh, mm. is the leading language, can you? Uh, and you're in a hotel situation. How about doing a course English in a hospitality setting? Prove to your employer that you have the skills, because this is what's happening in the world of work. It's becoming less about where you went to college or where you learned something and how much it cost you, to being able to say. Who, who are you, what are your skills, mm. and what, what do you know, and what can you do? What do you have to offer? Yes, but you see, it's, it's becoming, technology is yeah. allowing us to assess people separate. They don't care where you went to college, or how mm. much you paid, and how much your parents paid. That's, a, that's, that's an old signaling of how smart you might be. Today, if you go on a platform like Alison, we can test you on a whole load of stuff. We can ask you about a whole load of, you know, in terms of knowledge about different industries. We can test your personality. We can see so much about who you are so that you don't need to have a piece of paper. And that's where the world of work is going. It will matter less and less that you, that you went to college. It will matter what do you really know? And who are you and what are your skills? Because we're going to be able to assess that more and more today. It's all about the transferable skills in this day and time and the future. Now, remember, this is a conversation all about Alison.com and, of course, looking at the future of learning, what you and I can stand to gain. And, of course, looking at the past two years, the pandemic has definitely taught us that what we are used to can be changed in just a matter of seconds. So do stay with us. Um, any questions or comments, we welcome you to share them with us. We'll be addressing them as we continue on with the show. But for now, we take a very quick breather. We'll be back to continue this discussion. Do stay with us.